Hello and welcome to another episode of TFG Indian Football Roundup presented by Rayor. What went down at the East Bengal club on Wednesday 21st July is unprecedented in many ways. In Kolkata we have seen fans of two different clubs fighting each other to the extent that sometimes police intervention has been needed but it's rare to see a lathi charge happening at an internal protest at a club. After the East Bengal club officials refused to sign the deal with the investor consortium that they have which is led by Hari Mohan Bangur and the owner of Shri Cement a section of the fans said that they had lost faith in the club officials and they did not want a scenario to arise where there would be a whole season without East Bengal playing football so they scheduled a protest on 21st July and there were others who were supporting the officials decision and they also showed up some say they were brought in but basically there was a crowd there as well that was opposing the protesters and doing a counter protest of sorts so there were skirmishes a media person was attacked even before the protest started another fan was heckled and assaulted and that too was before the actual protest began when the protest began the police was there they had set up a barricade and they were standing in between the two arguing and sloganeering sections of east bengal fans but at one point there was a lathi charge several east bengal fans were injured some were taken to the hospital some ran some were arrested later released and this activity from the police appeared to be targeted at the protesters who were there to speak against the officials now the whole situation is nuanced and there are many sides to the story and you can go to the fangaraj.com to read a full timeline of events that took place leading up to the protest and during the protest but at a more fundamental level what was happening at east bengal club was a question that has been asked in the kolkata maidan many times prior but has remained uh, unresolved so far do the club officials have complete dominion over a club or do the fans also have a say in the direction their club takes usually these clubs east bengal mohan bagan and mohammedan sporting they are registered societies where the members vote to make the executive and management decisions however we have seen groups of officials who have been in power for a long time in certain clubs and a lot of fans have accused them of just hanging on to power sometimes at a detriment to the progress of the club itself the situation is still fluid and the debate is nowhere close to be settled right now but let's take stock of what happened on wednesday and what it means for east bengal for indian football for isl for cfl and the whole landscape of the sport that we love going forward we will speak to two east bengal supporters and get their detailed opinions on the matter Shubhashachi Chakraborty who is a lifelong uh, East Bengal fan will join us very soon but first we're going to quickly hear from Hindol Palit who has seen Indian football up close as a fan as well as a reporter in the past and see what he thinks went down and what is the situation at the club we already mentioned that we will maintain we'll try to maintain the decency and the protocol and the decorum while demonstrating our agony because all of us i think mean, all these bengal supporters were extremely anxious were extremely agitated regarding the future of our club and i think we have all the legitimate right to express our grievance and we make an appeal across the fan base that we are going to demonstrate our anger our frustration in a very in a in a non violent way we will not resort to any kind of you know violence and we stick to that we most stick to that and of course there was provocation from the other end but uh, initially police tackled the situation very well okay they didn't uh, let those goons come in okay but however after almost two and a half hours things started to things started to go it was, you know it started to spiral out of our hand and there are some you know some some all section of supporters they started they started to express their grievances against certain officials um, some of the you know cards were get out by the agitated group of agitated supporters i mean it's a very common situation in agitation like this and then suddenly police started lathi charging and we got dispersed and some of us you know some of our some of our supporters there is the injuries on their head on their body okay i i mean i'm not sure but i got the news that you know few people had broken their legs okay Uh, i think four or five people got arrested okay 
So that is how it is. And uh, later I came to know that police say that there was no lucky charge and all, but it was not, not the right thing. I mean, it was not the truth. We have seen, I've seen it with my own eyes that there was a lucky charge and all. Okay, so that was it. But it's not, it's nothing that you know, we didn't expect. It was quite expected. And I think in coming days, in future, in future days, we will, we will stick to the same ground. We will still continue to speak out against the malpractice that is happening in our club. Okay, I think that as a supporter, as a devoted supporter, it's our moral duty, it's our responsibility to speak out against this. And of course, we hope that we don't have to do this any further. A solution will come back very soon and we'll get to play football. Okay, so, okay, so do, you think, do you think the violent outbursts were results of provocations? I think so. I think so. Yes, yes. Now, it's not exactly it's not possible for me to pinpoint who has started, but there was a lot of provocations. Okay, so yeah. Yes, I think so. Okay, so what should be the ideal uh, next step for the fans? Uh, because now we have a uh, sort of the relationship between the officials and uh, the fans is in a moment of crisis. See, what I feel, I think it's, uh, I think you, you know you know it better than me probably, that there is a major trust issue between between the, you know, the fans and the officials. Hmm. Now, of course, there are a few people who prefer to keep their faith in the officials and you know I don't share their viewpoints and I don't share the ideology but I will not say that they are not the most supporters. They have their way, way of looking at things. But I mean the, the major chance, the most of us, we don't, we don't appreciate the fact the way the club is being run and it's not just about one or two years. For last 10, 15, 12 years, we are not having any major success. So we demanded a major overhaul. We demanded a change and last year, treatment came on board almost at the last hour. We didn't do that well in the tournament, quite expected to so. And this time we expected them to build a strong team, but still, you know, some issues keep on happening. And we expect that, you know, both the parties should stick together and they work out some solution. I mean, that is not our concern. We are supporters who want to play football. And it's a responsibility of the officials to make us play football. That's it. That's all I want. One of the takeaways from the incident yesterday is that it takes a lot for fans to behave like this. Fans don't just wake up one day and decide that we're going to do protests. They don't want to pick a fight with the management. And in this case, the East Bengal fans have been making their voices heard online for months now and they, they've waited a long time. This situation has been stuck in a limbo since last year. And it's only now that we're seeing the patience of the East Bengal fans sort of nearing its limits. Let's talk to Shubhushachi Chakraborty, who was observing the incidents very closely. And he personally knows some of the people who were injured in the Lati charge and the skirmishes yesterday. To be honest, it's a shameful feeling as a fan of an Isbengal club for more than 20 years to see our fans getting... Like, it is a shameful for a fact that we have to get down into the streets to be able to play football. Like, as a fan of East Bengal club, we want to play football. That's a minimum thing we can ask from our officials and everything. Our fans have to get down and then we get heckled by the administrator station and we get heckled by everyone, our officials, the goons and everyone. So this is a very shameful feeling for us as being an East Bengal fan today. I don't know uh, if anyone would comment otherwise. In the end, it's a very historic moment as far as I see it. It's uh, a show of force from the East Bengal fans and all the rhetoric that we have seen, uh, you know, that uh, the East Bengal fans were saying that the officials have failed in their job, they need to sign and resign. And it was very easy for the officials to sort of brush it off like, okay, some people are doing this online. The majority of the fans are still with us. And I think after what happened today, we can pretty much say that that's not the case. The majority of the fans are actually siding with the uh, investors and not with the uh, officials that are uh, there in the club. Would you agree? See, there are a few factors uh, related to this. First of all, Ismail Club being one of the like primary achievers in football in country. If in India we talk about football, it's Mohan Bagan and Is Bengal. So these two, these are the two clubs which always aim for the highest success, right? 
So in the last 18 years, we have seen these officials, they failed to deliver. Is one club winning just Calcutta Leagues in the last few seasons? We haven't won a nation, national level title since 2012. We won the Federation Cup title. So we are without a national level title for the last nine years. And so as fans, we are not happy with our officials. It's very obvious. Now they say, uh, these investors, they try to sell uh, buy our club. We are selling the club. It's not for sale and everything. All those blab blabbering they say on everywhere. So there is there's a simple question we fans like can ask our officials. If there is a discrepancy between the first move which you have signed in front of us, Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee at Navanna on October last year and the new term sheet, the final term sheet which the investors are providing, then why aren't you going to the court? Why aren't you putting a legal case? If there is a discrepancy, there's a difference in the term sheets and the main move. And if there is no difference, then when you first signed it in, in the move, then why are you not signing it now? Why did you sign it then? It's a main question. If you had signed it, then you have to sign it now. Otherwise, you have to take the blame and resign. All the Israeli okay. wall fans, they say, they say that we are divided. We are a very small number. We are we are demanding for this signing of the term sheet. Today, they saw more than 1,000 people in this pandemic situation. They went on the streets. And we, like, it was, it was a mass movement. I do not remember even in my, like, since when I'm following Indian football, I, do not, I never saw more than 1,000 people gather into the streets regarding a protest, regarding Indian football. So it was a historic day, I guess. Yeah, and uh, we have some precedents uh, that uh, this kind of pressure from fans uh, spurring action. I mean, if you remember, there was that match against Minerva Punjab in uh, I League, and after that, there was this huge protest by East Bengal fans uh, at uh, Barasat. And uh, a few months later, the first major uh, investor was brought in by the club. Uh, it was Quest. Uh, that did not work out. Uh, but just playing a devil's advocate just for a moment you know let, let's say like it was under pressure they did not have enough time so they just uh, signed whatever MOU that was in front of them last year and now they are realizing that uh, the, some of the uh, clauses that are present uh, in the deal like uh, you know taking control of the club's property club's uh, stadium uh, the club tent and uh, you know just coming in with these uh, new rules regarding which supporters can come in and when and uh, all all the all the stuff that they said you know uh, a trespasses will be prosecuted and everything where do you stand on those because ultimately if uh, a, an investor a private party takes control of those things do you not think that that actually undermines uh, the independence of the club? Uh, first of all, like the ones who signed the contract, they aren't kids. They aren't not like newbies who are into club administration or football administration. We signed a contract, I guess, if I remember on October, just a month before the Indian Super League started. And it mm. took almost more than a month or more than two months of negotiation between the investors and the club officials and then they signed the MOU then only on October 3rd if I remember the date correctly uh, they uh, ISL FSDL announced our entry into the Indian Super League so mm -hmm. if they say like we signed in it hastily without reading all the contracts then they have to take the blame for that you signed it then so now if you do not sign who will take the blame we as the fans we are the sufferers we as you said we uh, protested in 2016, I guess, during the yeah. Trevor Morgan era, Trevor Morgan era, we protested. There was a huge protest, and after that, uh, we walked out after after the stadium after 13 minutes, I guess. And mm. and like after that, there was a huge protest at the club premises, and then they brought in a first investor. Then after after one year, again we saw similar things with club officials. They had a tussle with the investor, Sissime, uh, Quays and. Israel officials, they had a huge fight and then Quest decided to leave. Now they brought in someone else and again there is a fight. So every time we see like all the investors are bad, all the coaches are bad, all the players are bad, only these officials are correct. This can be true, right? For 18 years, they are in power and they fail to deliver. Someone has to take the blame. They can keep on sit, keep on sitting on the chair 
forever and as fans you asked uh, what is our um, our standpoint regarding the uh, like terms which assessment said first of all we do not believe our officials if there is such a uh, clause regarding trespassers should know what is who are trespassers what he, they mentioned like there are mem- who are not members shouldn't enter the club premises if as a as a neutral pers- from a neutral perspective do you see anything wrong in that once who are not member should they be allowed any time any in in world football do you can you name one club one football club which allows anyone to enter the premises any time it is not possible right there should be a particular time for people fans to come in fans to go out you cannot come in and go out from the premises every uh, as you wish it is not a pre- playground or a park right so if mm-hmm. they put in such clauses which will enhance the surrounding of the maidan we all know what happens in maidan we all know what happens after sunset so mm-hmm. if they try to improve the infrastructure in the try to improve the atmosphere reg- around maidan i don't think they are doing anything wrong and they say we, uh, they will change the logo they are they will keep the logo this is these are all like bullshit to me because like you do not sign srk into a film and change this look into ajay devgan right the investor they are coming here to invest and make business out of this bengal brand name they won't they will never try to change the logo or anything that will hurt the supporters which will decline their business right so these are all bullshit yeah. uh, logics from the club officials so uh, all the people who were out there uh, you know supporting the officials who were saying uh, that uh, no this is i think one of the uh, people who was uh, leading uh, this march of women it was mrs molly ganguly uh, who is a member of the uh, executive committee of east bengal one thing she said was that like this is like a temple and uh, even though i mean i'm i'm paraphrasing just getting to the point that she was making uh, that we know that usually the clubs say that only members can uh, enter but usually in practice any supporter usually comes into the club and they sit down they chat they hang out they uh, go go out it's it's a kind of an open environment that has been there for a long time so if a investor from outside comes in and uh, suddenly they just try to corporatize the whole environment and uh, you know put in these new rules that makes it impossible for a just a normal supporter who's not a member uh, if it makes them uh, makes it impossible for them to come to the temple that's not something that is very desirable is it see once again uh, indian football is getting professional just in the last few years we all no it wasn't a professional setup we all know how like just 20 30 years back there used to be players who, who were kidnapped so if we talk about traditions then we have to say those are also right kidnapping players and signing them so we cannot keep proving all wrong things and make them right just in the name of tradition now mm-hmm. we know uh, our new coaches the foreign coaches who comes in they do not like anyone from the outside to come in and watch the training sessions it is not right we all know any club any coach they have specific timings which they for which they allow outside people the media the supporters to come in for open practice sessions not for all practice sessions so if the club or the new corporate entity they try to curb all these things and i don't think there is anything wrong in that secondly if you see last one year sri cement the entire team the uh, the social media team and everything they prioritized our legacy they give respect to a legacy more than these officials has given in the last 18 years they gave respect to our colors they gave respect to our torch mashal the, our logo emblem everything so i don't think they will do any mm. such thing that will cause problem to the fans only only one they will cause problem to are these greedy officials okay so you are completely in favor of uh, you know sri cement uh, or uh, this uh, investor consortium taking control of the club stadiums uh, the uh, membership system uh, perhaps like a fan membership system being uh, started all of those changes that are being proposed <laughs> you are in favor of 
a fan membership of 8000 which the club say they have a members of 8000 people they cannot provide even a list of the which members they have which are the new members they are taking when which are the members which are going out there is a huge mm. huge what do you call it a foggy nature of the entire thing so if the new investors try to clean up the mess which these officials have created we all will support that no we cannot even question who are the new members getting in we cannot even question how mm. this new member selection is getting only the ones only the new people who are praising the officials they are getting membership this is not how a proper football club should be run it should be open to yeah. all members who can pay the membership and everything so mm. why not that so if a new comp- a corporate anyone not swiss event anyone who tries to clean up the mess they become bad they they are they are portrayed as bad they are portrayed as they are they will buy the club they will diminish the legacy of his bengal they will diminish the what do you call our traditions and everything is completely a complete every time this put out the same narrative to for every investor every only, only they want they have to keep power if okay you keep mm-hmm. power today in today's date we we need 50 to 60 crores minimum budget for a football team to play in indian super league is bengal team should play in the top tier of the indian football is bengal mohan yeah. both should play so if you can pay 50 crores by yourself no no doubt uh, i have no problem you keep power you make football team we play but we have to play football if you cannot pay 50 crore rupees 60 crore rupees then why are you not signing if you don't have the money then you should not hold the power and everything that's a simple thing once who paid the money once who pay the huge amount of sum they should be in power so in the lead up to this movement today uh, do you think uh, that the outpouring that we saw from the fans uh, it's a culmination of all these grievances that they have had uh, uh, against uh, the officials not just this issue like do you think that sort of played a role that all these years years of neglect years of malpractice all of that sort of came pouring out today absolutely this one tussle one in uh, like township tussle is not the only thing absolutely we we have been a failure in the national sense a uh, national scene since 2012 we are a club is not having won a title in the national level in last 9 years there has been a huge like people goons are taking control over the club there are threats calls being made to fans who ask anything to the officials there have been many instances when fans are being called and threatened you you have mm-hmm. seen all over social media so such grievances yeah. build up and today it was an outpour today yeah, so... there was no fans club there was there were fans of all east bengal fans from all domain they came even people came from kuch bihar and he was heckled today mm-hmm. his shirt was torn his eye uh, specs was broken so he he wasn't part of any any fans club he was a simple east bengal supporter and yes yet he was heckled so this is yeah. this is shameful yeah a lot of people got attacked today so are uh, you know the, we saw some people being carried off on an ambulance uh, pro- presumably to a hospital uh, have you yeah. heard any update on their health are they yeah, doing all right three people three people were taken to the pg hospital to trauma care and uh, last report i had at around 8:30 pm like both, all three of them were released after first mm-hmm. aid and everything there there's a guy i guess abhishek something i don't know his name properly but he got three stitches at the back of his head uh, he fell down into a drain there was a drain just outside the lesley claudia street and he fell down after police started lati charging so he like there were they, he needed three stitches and the rest were given just basic first aid and they left and uh, i guess police also released all of the ones who were uh taken into the van they released all of them uh four people being arrested uh, uh, as as far as you know they have also been released now yeah they are also released okay okay so that's a good thing overall uh how do you think the tension built up because uh, there were those uh, who were uh, supporting the officials wearing identical armbands and uh, yeah. all with their freelance tokens and uh, of course there was provocation early on uh, somebody was assaulted and his clothes were torn uh, torn off and then yeah. uh, i think shibam got assaulted as well he was basically doing a very neutral reporting 
and uh, he just suddenly got uh, attacked yeah, got by somebody yeah. yeah so so do you think like these uh, provocations were just happening uh, throughout the day just they, were, were they trying to uh, create a situation where his bengal fans look like uh, you, you know you, at least you the, see, if you notice the protesters you look notice, like goons yeah <laughs> if you notice properly uh, they build it very very cleverly they put a anna seva program just today they were doing anna seva program all over the kolkata and today they put it at east bengal club tent they wanted mm-hmm. their members to be present there they if you see the pictures there were like paid goons who were brought in by vans there were people who saw mm-hmm. people being carried in buses and vans who do not even know the spelling of east bengal club they were brought in to in front of the club premises as supporters of the officials there were few two or three fans clubs with members who are pro supporters uh, pro officials they were brought mm-hmm. in and they were made to stand in front of the club premises and they chanted all pro official slogans so mm-hmm. and there there were social media posts threatening today's movement all everyone who were willing to go to today's movement today's protest movement they were threatened for the last 3 4 days since the event was announced on social media they were threatened like khala hobe and all, all these slogans they they were so there was a tension building up since for the last 3 4 days and today mm-hmm. after suman da suman rod got heckled suman da came from kuch bihar mm-hmm. and he went to the club you said they called it temple for us it is also a temple we entered the club premises by like bowing down our head we we it is also a temple so he went to the temple first and there he was he was thrashed he was heckled his shirt was torn his specs specs were broken and he was said like uh, you are a dalal from this fans club this fans club that fan club so they are saying we are all dalal for fans club and only they are the original supporters of ismon club so this is this is all like, what do you say it makes me laugh to see this such a condition is shameful indeed where do you think the relationship between the east bengal fans and the officials goes from here because this is a pretty big deal it's not something you can just you know forget and forgive and move on one thing i believe is this is just a start now hmm. the officials again i guess they had a meeting today they called for an emergency like uh, executive committee meeting today and they will again they again ask for the ex player they call anyone they, they call chandan manager he played in the 60s he is in his 80s now <laughs> they, they call such players they are saying we'll ask their suggestion they played in the 60s it has been 60 years since chandan manager retired how does he what does he? <laughs> i am not disrespecting him he is a great ambassador to the club everything but you need professional help right you cannot call anyone who played in the 50s and 60s to give and give suggestion get take give suggestions this is very very comedic to be honest in the officials are, we we all know the, fa- the today what happened the officials are scared now they know yeah. they they are cornered actually they have to sign otherwise what will they do if the former team shishment has a sporting right they will put yeah. a case legal case they will ask they said to get back the sporting rights they have to pay 55 crores can the officials pay 55 crores no they do not have the money so what they what what will they do they said if east bengal club does not pay football it it is not nothing to them it cannot be kalyan majumdar he is 80 years old we can understand he has been a secretary for so many years he says he is the greatest secretary of all time this is his quote not mine and that guy says if east bengal doesn't play football for 2 3 years is nothing to him it is nothing it, it cannot it cannot oh. go on like that east bengal club not playing football is would, would be one of the greatest disasters to indian football yeah. so east bengal club should play football and if the officials do not have money then they have to sign they are cornered and today's event proved it again that they are cornered they did not have the guts they all call, they uh, nitu sarkar said every time like offici- uh, supporters can come to the club and see the term sheet and everything they can discuss it and today when everyone went they did not have the guts to even come out and face them yeah. they put out their own goons they put out the police their administration everything and they sat inside the club tent so they are scared 
and they did not have the guts to even face the supporters. So this is just the beginning, I see. So uh, you know, talking about that, uh, they at one point uh, issued a proposal uh, to have uh, three representatives of the protesting fans to go to the club and uh, discuss the matter with them. Why do you think that was rejected from the fans? There were thousand plus fans. The uh, three, it's selecting three from thousand. That would be a more complex situation than those three officials to come in front of them. Couldn't they? they we were yeah. protesting peacefully. We were very much protesting. We could have sat down. We were all, there were also fans who were sitting down and protesting. So we would have been sitting down and those three officials could have come in front of the protesting fans and talked, but they did not have the guts to come out. So it was obviously yeah. rejected. Where do you uh, see things from there, uh, from going from here? I mean, I think uh, the uh, actions today sort of signaled it very strongly to uh, the investors that the fans actually backed them and not the officials. So it, the hand, if, if they were, I was always of the opinion that uh, these rejections from the East Bengal club officials, that we're not going to sign this, we're not going to sign that. It's a way of public negotiation. You know, they want to get something more out of the deal. They want uh, some yeah. terms to be changed. So they just come out and reject and, you know, create a situation. And they think that the, uh, you know, uh, they're counting on some FOMO to happen to Sri Cement saying like we sunk so much money and uh, it's never going to come back if we pull out now. But uh, now I think the club officials hand has weakened because uh, the investors know that the fans only back them and uh, the pressure is on. Uh, the officials now. What do you think happens now? Like, uh, do you think within the next few weeks we see a solution? I think personally, uh, officials will try to get again in contact with our Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee because mm -hmm. it's the last hope. Actually, it's the last hope. Her intervention last year made us play ISL. We all know about that. She helped this club officials get an investor. And this contract, the MOU was signed in front of her. So she is a last hope. And yeah. today, and every time there has been a, like, they try to portray the fans are with them. The fans are with them. But after today's event, they cannot do that. There is a huge amount of fans and the amount of media highlight today's event got will again mm -hmm. make, like, our chief minister, if she gets in, she will know that our fans are not entirely with our officials. So yeah. now they're cornered. So I guess only intervention will be from our chief minister. Otherwise, I don't think there is anything up the sleeves for the officials. They have nothing left. Do you think uh, some help has been coming from uh, the political side of things and maybe even uh, FSDL? Have you been hearing something like that? Nothing. Uh, as fans, we are fans. We are not political people. So as fans, we are... We were there to protest, to ask officials. There was only two demands. Like, if there is a discrepancy between the two townships and the MOU, then put, uh, we, would have, we would have taken the side of the officials. We would have said, yeah. yes, C-Cement is wrong. You put a legal case on C-Cement. If there is no discrepancy, you have to sign. There was a simple demand from the fans. If actually there so, was a discrepancy, we, we we fans would have supported the officials, but they could not show one thing, one thing there is a discrepancy. Now they are changing the statements. That's where we are then. Uh, East Bengal, I mean, if I'm to be just honest with you, I think East Bengal will play in ISL. Uh, even last year, uh, it, it was in a much worse situation, I would say, uh, you know, in terms of chances of East Bengal playing. But still, they pulled through. I think it's going to happen again. Uh, but what happened today was very unprecedented in the history of Indian football. And uh, just, uh, I think it cements the image that, uh, you know, fans have their own minds and uh, they know what's good for the club and they're not just going to take the official's word for it. And uh, so, so what would you like to say uh, as an East Bengal fan to the incoming investors, you know, uh, whether they sign or not uh, is down the line. But what do you want to tell them now? First of all, like we lost all our star players from last season. Even the handful of players who performed, they all left. From Bright, from Narayandas to Sarthog Goli, Devjit Mojumda, everyone left. So 
even if we play we are in a very bad situation the only thing we can say to the investor if they sign please please try to get at least two three players from the first team and some good foreigner so that we can save our image in front of the entire because once if if we play and once it is on television everyone will forget what happened within the investors and the club one day is bengal loses by three goals all the fans will again get back get against the investor group so please uh, make a good team and if they do not sign please give a statement please take this to legal so, so that there is something this cannot like go on forever for five years like we are not playing anything it cannot go on forever right like they are not yeah. building any football team they are not doing anything and investor is saying we have the sporting rights and we will not play it is this like his tailment is going on forever so this cannot go on so either one has to take a step now to conclude this episode i would like to give the last word to shumon kumar roth who was assaulted by pro official crowd in front of the east bengal club before the protests began when i asked him that what he wants for the club going forward he said all i want is for us to keep playing football that's what we go out to support what else would we want from the club what did we go there for let the club play in cfl in durand in isl we want the club to be the champion we are fans we don't have anything else to ask for in many ways this does sum up the essential demand of the east bengal fans right now they want this ugly situation to end and they want to be excited for the isl they want to be excited about the team they want to discuss the signings like so many fans of other clubs are doing right now and for the good of indian football i hope they get their wish sooner rather than later thank you for listening we'll be back very soon with the next episode